yesterday I was chatting with a guest who told me uh, who in the country is the most generous with the holiday tips. And I began to think about, okay, who are you tipping and uh, how... Uh, how much are you tipping? How, how are you showing your appreciation? That's amongst the things I wanted to discuss with my next guest, who is an international etiquette and modern manners expert and the founder of Access to Culture. Her name is Sharon Schweitzer, and she is on the WHO Newsmakers Line. Sharon, good morning. Welcome to WHO in Des Moines. Good morning. Thank you for having me on as a guest. So to uh, continue the discussion that I was having on tipping, I wanted to ask you, Who do you tip this holiday season and how much? What are some of the rules? Well, Jeff, I'll tell you what. There are no specific rules about how much or who to tip in the U.S. The time period is between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day, and it's usually used to express gratitude by tipping those who have shown loyalty throughout the year. And the gratuity can be in the form of cash tips, gifts, or even simply notes. So you can really want to spread the giving spirit. So the first thing you want to do is budget. Then you want to prioritize and make a list of those to tip, placing those who, who help you the most frequently at the top of the list. That list can be anyone from employees, assistants, household health, your hairstylist, your massage therapist, or your dog walker. And I know that there might be a lot of pressure to give them cash, and I know they appreciate it, Sharon, but how do you express your appreciation if money is tight in the house? You do have these people that provide you services. We appreciate them, but maybe you're on a, a, a tight budget in, in regard to uh, getting these services provided to you. How are, what, are, what are some other ways of expressing your appreciation? Well, Jeff, you're so right. Tipping does not necessarily have to be monetary. You can consider other ways to show gratitude, such as a heartfelt card, a homemade holiday treat, or a gift card with enough value for at least two specialty coffees. You can also handwrite a note of appreciation. A personalized handwritten thank you note is a really heartfelt, low-cost way to show genuine gratitude. If you buy some nice paper stock and maybe you have a calligraphy pen around the house, you can express your appreciation for the recipient's loyalty and services throughout the year. You can also bake. You know, consider some baked specialties, maybe Czech kolache, baklava, peppermint mm. bark, anything like that that you bake that maybe is your specialty. Bake up some cookies. And there are some people you run into, uh, Sharon, when you attempt to tip them, they say they can't accept tips. So I would think the handwritten notes, some some of the other things that you were just talking about are relevant in that point, right? Yes, that's right. There are some people who cannot accept cash and who cannot be tipped at all. Accountants, attorneys, auditors, bankers, bookkeepers, the list goes on. Those people, police officers, they cannot accept tips, but they may be able to accept fake good yeah and you're talking my language there i appreciate that very much sharon while i had you on the line this is anticipated to be a um a record-breaking weekend for travel and i wanted to ask you a little bit about holiday travel etiquette as well first of all here's the big question you know i try to be a very pleasant polite traveler but of course (laughs) i i feel the stress building up in me how how do you avoid the stress of holiday traveling Well, the the biggest secret for navigating airports is preparation, especially this time of year. So the best thing you can do is, number one, arrive early. Uh, Number two is, before you get to the airport, download books, games, Netflix episodes on your phone. You know, create a jam and playlist on Spotify for those unwanted wait times that are going to cross your path. Download GoGo InFlight for wireless internet and entertainment options to ease those long layovers. And then just plan on travel delays. Unfortunately, they have a way of turning otherwise rational people into irritable travelers. Right. And just realize the airline personnel generally have no control over weather delays, aircraft maintenance, or flu viruses. You know, our airline personnel, they're doing their best to ensure the safety of thousands of passengers and crew. So let's not be grumpy passengers um, and just prepare in advance is my best advice. That is timely advice because we do expect some delays in airports on the east and west coasts this weekend. Of course, 
tips with uh, traveling with with kids, uh, Sharon. That is a a special odyssey in and of itself. Uh, any special tips uh, for traveling with kids? Yes, I do. I am going to go with the experts, um, the psychology and child analyst experts, who say that when you're traveling with children, all those home rules go flying out the airplane window. Yeah. And when you when you fly with them, um, just expect that you are going to be able to give them treats, you know, books, games. Uh, you know, let them have all the screen time they want, but let them do whatever they want to do in terms of keeping their attention and keeping them well-mannered. So, you know, let them have the toys and, if you need to, the snacks, but let them do whatever they need to do to be good kiddos on the plane. And also make sure you keep them hydrated and give them something for their ears so that they have something to chew on, you know, when the plane takes off and when the plane lands. And and parents, please avoid binge drinking before boarding. I know it's tempting, but with those high altitudes, it dehydrates our body. So instead of binge drinking, let's chug some water before and after boarding. <laughs> Sharon, you're just being very practical there. I have one more question for you, and it is a very practical question. What do you do if the person in front of you reclines his seat into your lap? Okay. You know, aircraft space is shared space. Yep. So please ask before reclining your seat because the average economy class seat, the pitch between seats is approximately 28 to 34 inches. So when the passenger in front of you reclines their seat, it's a tight fit. So you don't want somebody doing that to you. So before you do it to the person behind you, it's really nice to ask because the last thing you want is the flight attendant coming up to you and asking you, you know, to be a nice passenger. It can be somewhat embarrassing. That is, uh, that's great advice, and it's very practical this time of year. International etiquette and modern manners expert Sharon Schweitzer. She is the founder of Access to Culture. Sharon, thanks very much for joining me today. It's my pleasure, Jeff. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. 1015 is our time. A reminder. 